Hi, this is Professor Cummings. I wanted to do a, another another uh, presentation on metal casting, but in this one I wanted to go over how metals actually solidify. Now this is a really important as far as the casting process goes, particularly if you're either a technician working in the casting process uh, or an engineer who's designing aspects of the casting process, such as the, the mold design, or if you're trying to select the best casting process. You know, there are some casting processes that are selected based on economics. Uh, some are based on some specific goal that you're trying to, to achieve. You know, and this is one thing that can actually be, you know, a part of that selection process is how that you want that casting to solidify. Now, again, start off with our original definition of metal casting. It is the process of pouring, and here's an important part, molten metal. So the metal is in a liquid state into a hollow cavity and allowing it to cool and solidify. So cool and solidify into a desired shape. And the solidified part is known as a casting. So again, so we're going from a liquid metal, molten metal, and we're trying to get it to solidify you know, so we're getting it to solidify. So this arrow just represents solidification and getting it to its final shape. So all castings have to go through this. And it's a, it can be a very, very scientific, uh, very, very particular way of developing the solidification, and which can greatly impact the quality, the nature, and all of the characteristics of your casting. You know, solidification at different rates uh, can make your casting a lot more pliable, a lot stronger, easier to machine, and other processes that are going to take place. So how you solidify this metal is, is very, very important. It also plays into other aspects like uh, shrinkage in the casting because you have a device called a riser. And a riser is the, one of the purposes of a riser is as a reservoir to help offset or help mitigate any type of shrinkage. So it's very important that you know how the, this riser is going to solidify because you want that to solidify at the you know after all the other parts of the casting have solidified because it needs to stay liquid so that you can actually use it use that molten metal. So let's go through you know the the cooling some of the aspects of cooling metal or solidifying metal so the engineer you know you need to be mindful of three things so the first thing you know that metal actually solidifies from the inside outward so that's one of the more basic ones you know metal actually going into a mold cavity you're actually going to start solidifying from the outside and working inward so it'll start as a shell you know and the shell actually gets thicker and thicker until finally you've got a solid component so you've actually created a casting you know and this happens fairly quickly depending on the size of the casting you know size and the material and, and other conditions but it's it's not a really long process to get this solidification done now one important thing to know about th this solidification process is that it can have a, a really big impact on the importance or the nature of the casting when it's done so the the rates of the cooling impacts the grain structure of the casting. So if something cools down quickly, you end up with smaller, more uniformed uh, grains. It cools slower, you end up with longer, uh, more columnar grains. And this is really important because you know this is the equiax grains. You know if you you know shock uh, casting, you know goes you know molten metal goes into a a relatively cool casting, relative mold body, you can end up with very tiny grains, particularly on the shell. And you can see this, you know, particularly in these earlier stages. This would be a case of uh, really cold casting. You end up with that initial outside uh, surface being touched by the, the mold. And this is where you can end up with, you know, some very uh, you know, sh small equiax grains. Now, as the mold starts to get insulated or you know as that that shell gets built up and the the heat is actually traveling outwards from the out, inside out you know the grains start to become more columnar so you can see the difference between these whereas these are all kind of small almost looks like a gravel driveway these actually 
look like long ice crystals. So these are called columnar grains. You know, these are columnar grains. And they're traveling along the same direction that the heat is flowing outward. So that's columnar grain. And this is from a slower cooling process. These are from a very rapid cooling process. So that's what impacts the grain size. And like I said, this is also going to dictate, you know, a lot of the characteristics of the casting, the physical characteristics of your casting. Now, the third thing I wanted to talk about was the cooling rate. You know, the cooling rate is a function of the volume and the surface area. You know, so that's one of the things that you want to keep in mind. You know, now this is the volume and the surface area. It's a few, a little more complicated than that. But as you are, and if you're using a a common, you know, process for casting, you know, co common material for casting or for your mold, you'll find that even within that one one process, the volume and surface area of different components is going to uh, greatly dictate the amount of time it takes for your your casting to solidify and the equation that's used in this you know for solidification and that's a mouthful to say Chvoronov's rule now Chvoronov's rule you know ties to number three here that solidification time is equal to C which is a mold constant with units of seconds per millimeter square multiplied by the volume and the surface area or volume divided by the surface area all raised to another constant of n. Now the first constant is the mold constant and it's based on the mold material, the metal properties, the temperature and in this case that you know if a mold is being set to a particular temperature you can heat a mold, you can actually have coolant lines to a, to a mold you know, and all these things can affect this mold constant. You know, what this mold is actually, or this, you know, this ratio is actually multiplied by. This N, this constant, is a constant that's based on the cooling rates. And it ranges anywhere from 1.5 to 2. And usually 2 is, is the most common constant, so it's typically squared. And this is how you calculate how long it's going to take for this uh, mold to solidify. Now, like I said, you know, it's the volume over the surface area. Now, what does this imply? Now, what this implies is that you can have two different uh, shapes. You know, even though it might have the same mass of material, you could have, you know, depending on the shape that you select and the amount of surface area that's exposed, you know, the volume and the surface area that's exposed, you could end up with you know completely and very dramatically different uh, cool uh, solidification times, and you know that's important because, like I was mentioned earlier, the risers you know and how a riser is designed because it has to solidify last uh, is you know a, a heavily dependent on you know Chvoronov's rule. Now, if you look at these two pictures that just came up, you have a cylindrical piece and a cube of the same material. Now if we have that assume a same material, same molding process, you know, just uh, just looking at these two different shapes, you can actually end up with a 25% difference in solidification time. So that's, you know, and it gets more into, you know, you can get more into depth on this, but for all intents and purposes, you know, this is one of the key aspects of how you would design a uh, casting or a, you know a mold for a casting process, and particularly the risers. So this is Professor Cummings. Uh, just wanted to go over this section on the casting process. Uh, thanks for watching.